No, your eyes don't deceive you. I do, in fact, have another busted Gretsch arch top. Um, once I decided to reset the neck on the other one, uh, I had a whole bunch of saved reverb listings. And so I, I took a shot, um, you know, sending the, the seller of this guitar, you know, a fairly low ball offer. Uh, he did accept, and uh, I think he got the better end of the deal. So when, when I got this, um, it was described as playing, but uh, it was playing only in the sense that if you played kind of like a low E chord, um, that worked. The action was so high that, um, you know, clearly the neck had to be reset. Um, but the reason I bought this one is actually um, to rebind it. So, you know, the reason why I do all these projects is really so that I can learn, um, you know, various things uh, about luthery. Luthery? about fixing guitars. Um, and so in this case, I wanted to do something that was more of a cosmetic repair. Now, when I took the neck, or when I took the strings off, uh, the neck is actually so loose, it almost wants to, uh, you know, reset itself. And so uh, this is definitely gonna be an interesting one. The first thing I'm gonna do is just to pry off all the binding here. Um, it's already coming off the neck pretty, pretty severely. And so I'll do that right now, and then uh, we'll see what other surprises this holds. A lot of guitars from this era, and specifically Gretsch guitars, um, had binding that was made out of uh, celluloid plastic, which um, got really brittle over the last 70 years. And so you have situations right here where you can just really peel it off with your fingers. It's, it's that brittle. Um, celluloid is also... Uh, somewhere between really flammable and explosive and so I think I'm going to wrap this up in, in some sort of I don't know, Wrap it up in something and get this out of my house uh, as soon as possible. The last thing I need is 70 year old plastic catching on fire always amazes me working on these guitars is um, how much uh, lacquer actually works almost like a glue. Um, this, this binding is ready to come off and it's flaking off in the little tiny pieces, but you know it's almost impossible to get it off until I score uh, the lacquer around the top. Once I do that, it really just falls off. I wonder if the binding goes behind the neck because it was already reset once. It appears that there's, I mean, it doesn't look like it was reset. Someone might have tried to pack some glue or something in there, but... The seller definitely got the better deal out of this. I'll have the last laugh when I fix it. Put a thousand dollars worth of time into a five hundred dollar guitar. A user on Reddit commented on my other one about um, the amount of confidence it would take to do work like this. Um, you know, there's some sort of word for this. I mean, of course, we're in the middle of a pandemic, and so it's not like I can really go anywhere and do that much. But uh, you know, you can get a guitar like this for like three, four hundred dollars. Um, if you pay pay three hundred dollars, you probably got a bad deal like I did. But um, yeah, it's just about you know taking that that chance, just kind of taking your time and and just working with it. There's no substitute. I mean, I watch a lot of YouTube videos, just like I make a lot of YouTube videos. But there's no you know substitute for just trying to do things. I mean, here 
all I'm using is a hobby knife and, and scoring around until I can make crumbly plastic fall off. Um, high skilled, this is not. It's about 20 minutes in, um, in real time, and I've already stripped the binding off the neck and the top of the guitar. And so um, I'm going to move this to, to time lapse for the for the bottom since there shouldn't be too much new to talk about here. But like I said, this isn't a particularly difficult process. You just have to be patient and uh, you know, a scalpel and, and time. So in terms of, of wall clock time, it took me about 45 minutes to strip the binding off of the neck and then the top and the bottom. As far as I can tell, um, the body here is actually in, in pretty good structural condition. Uh, there's only one place where I see it's a little loose. Of course, that's around the neck joint where the whole thing flexes anyway. After getting the binding off the body and the neck, I went ahead and removed the neck from the body and then I um, took the frets out of the neck. And so the next step is that I'm going to take my binding and uh, glue it to the neck. What I decided was, you know, I'm going to glue the binding first and then do the frets instead of doing it in the opposite order. Uh, either way will work, but if you add if you put the frets down first, it's easier to file the frets, but then you actually have to, you know, put the binding on and then cut between the frets to, to get the binding. That's how uh, Gibson style necks that have the little uh, fret nibs, that's how they do that. Uh, but it's a lot more labor intensive. And so I'm going to do it the other way. I'm going to put the binding on first, then fret over top of the binding. Um, that way um, it should be a whole lot less effort. One of the many things that's going to be tricky about this is that <clears throat> vintage lacquer is often very uh, brittle. And if I were to put uh, masking tape to hold down the binding, I run the risk of actually ripping um, the finish off. And so I got to be really careful uh, with how I do this. What I think I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to take some of my CA glue uh, put it in this gap here and then try and hold it still um, without gluing my fingers to it. And then, you know, once I can get, you know, at least a decent enough bind where the, the glue is holding it, then I can kind of go back from the other side and fill it in this way. Uh, the binding is, is bigger than the channel, uh, again, on purpose, so that I can go back and actually scrape it down flush uh, to here. And so, um, I'll have another opportunity if I if I wick um, CA glue into here and then I cut it down. I'll have another opportunity to actually go over um, sanding off any of the glue later. And so uh, that's the theory. Uh, let's see if I can even put a few pieces of tape just to hold this in. Uh, otherwise, it's going to be a long, slow process of me holding the binding in place, waiting for the glue to dry. One thing I want to really make sure of is that um, since this glue is so thin, it will go, go anywhere. And so I don't want to have this, the glue starting to wick out over the side here because um, even though I do plan on smoothing this binding down a little bit, um, I don't have any room to uh, scrape this glue off the lacquer without it you know, completely looking like a mess. Another thing I've done with, with binding like this is actually use acetone. Uh, the reason why I'm not using acetone right now is that uh, acetone is one of the um, ingredients in lacquer thinner. And so uh, I don't want to splash uh, acetone on this because it will also eat the lacquer. And so, um, you know, super glue, CA glue is essentially, I think, one of the only options here. Um, 
a fast one and hopefully, you know, it ends up being a, you know, long-term stable uh, option. So there you go, that's pretty good. That's the, the first bit of binding. Um, the next step after I let this dry for a while is um, I'll cut the end off here and then put the next uh, piece of binding there and then finally come back and do this side um, so that the binding you know meets up at the corners nicely. And then uh, I'll trim it down a little bit and then move on to uh, rebinding the body. I use my nippers to just roughly trim off the excess here. I'll go back later with uh, some combination of a razor blade, a chisel, a cabinet scraper or something and actually smooth it out. Uh, but for right now, you know, that's, that's plenty. And so the last step is really just to take one last piece of, of binding and uh, glue it to the end of the neck here. Um, these guitars were originally made um, with uh, a butt joint and so uh, essentially, you just you know take the square end, put a piece on, and make it a square end. And so um, that's why I didn't go and, and try and be fancy and, and take one continuous piece and bend it and do all that stuff. Um, really, just putting it back to the the level of craftsmanship it was when it shipped. And so this bind piece of binding is a little bit wide. I've uh, really carefully with a chisel um, cut the the end off so that you know it's flush with this end here. And so I'll glue this down, I'll let that dry, trim it up again, and you know that will be it for the, the rough binding portion uh, of rebinding the neck. Binding the body is effectively the same process as doing the neck. Uh, what I'm going to do is start up here by the neck joint, um, just tape it down uh, very gently to, to get it started. And you know just like the neck as well, I got to be really careful not to uh, drip glue everywhere because if the glue starts running out the bottom here, um, there's really no way for me to scrape it off without starting to take off all the lacquer. And so uh, I'll take my time uh, and kind of go around. And then uh, once I do the top, then of course I have to do the back. And then we can scrape it down and start seeing uh, what the final result was. I did the strip of binding on the bottom and then you know I spent a considerable amount of time uh, with a razor blade and you know a chisel here to go around and trim the top and so the last piece of this um, that I'm gonna do is I've just taken a little bit of I guess 120 grit sandpaper um, stuck it to uh, you know an impromptu sanding block and I'm just gonna go around and lightly sand the binding and kind of roll over the edges um, I always think it's weird when, um, you know, you have a guitar of, of this vintage, you put, you know, some new parts on there and then the new parts stick out um, like a sore thumb. And so what I'm going to do is just go in with the sandpaper a little bit, just try and smooth things over, round over the, the plastic binding just a little bit. And then um, after that, um, you know, the replacement part of the binding piece uh, will be done. 
I don't know what I'm going to do yet about putting a finish on it. Um, but, you know, in terms of, of getting the old plastic off and the new plastic binding on, um, this ended up being a pretty straightforward process. Thanks for watching.